Hey everyone, so this is your bell ringer for today, Thursday, February 18th, 2021. I'm going to go through and uh, check the solutions with you just in case you had any trouble today. So uh, first thing first, our first one here is a simple multi uh, division of fractions problems. Uh, I almost said multiplication because that's actually what we're going to do. So when we divide fractions, remember we're going to keep this first fraction the same. So that stay 7 12 so we're going to change the division sign to multiplication and we're going to flip our second factor here the good old keep change flip keep change flip so there's what we got we've got 7 times 5 which would be 35 up top and we've got 2 times 12 which is 24 on the bottom now we could go ahead and simplify this I could take 25 away um, from the top, or 24 away, sorry, from the top number, which would give me 11 left over, 11 24ths, and we would have then a whole number taken out. This is actually in simplest form, so one in 11 24ths, but I don't see that over here. What I do see is this one, 35 24ths, so that would have been your answer for this one. The other ones um, were different versions of flipping certain numbers, um, so maybe you knew it was, you needed to cross multiply, but just didn't know which one to use. So make sure you're keeping that first number the same, change the division sign to multiplication, and then flip the second number. And that's how we roll with number one. Let's check number two. So for number two, got a very slow computer today. All right, for number two, we just need to find a sum. Now this one, uh, basically we're just gonna rewrite this so that we can uh, line our numbers up. So 178,399 and 2 tenths. And actually I'm going to change that to 21 hundredths because in my second number I've got an extra decimal point over here. I've got 38 hundredths. And that way I can line both of these up and I make sure that my decimal point goes in the same spot for both numbers. Now that's the big thing here. If you got this one incorrect, chances are you just didn't line your numbers up correctly. So make sure that the decimal points go right over each other when you're adding with the decimals or subtracting with decimals. You want to line the decimal points up and if you need to drop a zero in to help you keep place, you may do that. Those zeros go on forever and it doesn't change the number. So uh, in this case, zero plus eight is eight. Three plus two is five. Four and five is, or sorry, nine and five, sorry, is 14. Here are the one up. Again, that would be 9 and 5 again, because we just added another one to it. And we'd say 10 and 4, which is also 14. Carry that one up. 3 plus 1 is 4, and then our big numbers don't change over here. So we'd have 178,444 and 5,800. So it was this first one right here. There you go. That's how you would do that one. If you've got any questions on that, please just let me know during office hours. We can run through a couple more with you. But it's just basically lining those numbers up. All right, for question number three. We have a problem that's a little bit tricky. So it says Kirian had uh, has a bead necklace business. She can make 12 necklaces in two hours. How long will it take her to make nine necklaces? Now, there are a couple of different ways you can think about doing this. But for me personally, I look at this like a function table. So I'm going to say 12 is my is my first box. And I know for my second box, I get two. And in my, my, this one over here, I know I need nine over here. So what can I do to this to get to there? Well, let's see. This is, well, let's see. If this is Y and this is X. Um, I know that I can take six times Y, which should give me X. 6y equals x. That will work for me. Um, so let's try 6y equals 9. I'm going to plug my 9 in for my x value. So uh, I know I need to divide by 6 to get that y by itself. y equals 9 over 6. Or if you were to simplify that fraction, I've got, uh, let's see, I can take a full 1 out. I've got three six left, or, sorry, I'm getting down here at the bottom, one half, one and one half. So one and one half hours would be the correct amount of time. 
because that's also equal to 1 and 3 6. There you go. That's how I would run that one. There are a couple different ways you could go about doing that. I can't really cover them all in the video, but that's how I would go about doing it, especially since we've been learning about function tables recently. You guys know how those functions work. So, All right, so question number four. It says, Naomi has 45 minutes to get ready for school. She spends X minutes getting dressed. Choose the expression that represents the number of minutes she still has to get ready. So I know in this problem, I'm, I need to find an expression that uses the 45 minutes. And then we know that X, X minutes is how much time she's already spent getting dressed. So I know that I wouldn't take the number of minutes that she's already spent getting dressed and multiply that by 45 because that has nothing to do with the problem that we've got so far. I know that I either need to take the 45 minutes and either subtract the amount of time she's getting ready or add that or take the number of minutes she's already spent getting ready and subtract the 45 from that. And in this case, we want to take the 45 minutes. That's how much total time she's got ready uh, to get ready for school. So we're actually going to subtract the X or the number of minutes she's gotten ready from that amount. So our answer would actually be this middle one here. It should have been... Um, Sorry, no, it should have been this one right here. 45 minus x. So the amount of minutes that she had total, and then we subtract what she's already what she's already used, and that would give us how much she has left, how much time she still has left. And last but not least, question number five. Here we go. All right, for question number five. We're finding the area of a trapezoid. Now, um, I know we may not remember how to do this, and we're actually in the next unit that we cover are going to get back into some geometry uh, dealing with area and volume, so we will need to know how to do this. So I did give you the hint that you're going to use the formula 1 half B1 plus B2 times H. Um, if you didn't know, looking at that, this stands for 1 half the base 1 plus the base 2 times height. So this right here and this right here, the flat parts that that trapezoid can sit on, those are the bases. So we would call this base one, maybe call this base two, and that's how we would figure this out. So we're just going to plug and chug, then this guy of course would be the other missing piece. And if uh, the height has to be perpendicular to one of the bases, or actually both of the bases in this case. So this is a perpendicular line. It, mean, it means it's at a 45 degree or a 90 degree angle from the two bases. They are right angles between the two. So this would be your height, and that's going to be 4 centimeters. So we can just plug our numbers in now for these things. So we have 1 half, base 1 is 5, plus base 2, which is 9 times the height, which is 4. In this case, that would be 1 half times 14 times 4. Then we take 1 half 14. I would do it that way myself. You can do it kind of any way you want to at this point, because remember, with the associative or commutative property, we could move these numbers around and multiply them in any old-fashioned we see fit. But I would take four, half of 14, which I know is 7, times 4, and that would give us 28. And then these are centimeters squared, square centimeters, because if we were measuring the area here, we would want to uh, lay out little square centimeters all over it and we would count those up. That's how we measure area. So 28 centimeters squared would have been your answer for question number five. And there you go. There's the guy, that, or there's the end of, sorry, bell ringer practice for today. If you have any questions on those bell ringer questions, uh, make sure to give me a call during office hours or shoot me an email and I will try my best to help you uh, practice a couple of the problems that you're having trouble with so that you feel ready uh, as we move forward towards our next units and then of course to iLearn in seventh grade. So uh, good job today. Keep it up. Try the independent practice or the guided practice next.